<laughs> I was in the middle of welding something. I didn't even realize what time it was. I thought it was 11. They still let you play with the welding equipment? Yeah, if it's not important. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's smart. see here. Let me get this turned on. All right, it's on and up. All right, so call meeting to order. Let's pledge allegiance to the flag. Pledge allegiance, Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do roll call. Jody Arp. Here. Bernie Byer. Okay. Laura Ensley. Here. Okay. Gerald Hall. Here. Sally Hawarda. Or Howland, sorry. I haven't heard from her. Okay. Rose Ellen Powell. That'd be me. Here. Todd Breezing, I'm present. Tom Wilkes. You on Zoom. Present by Zoom. I see him by Zoom, but I don't hear. Yeah, him. push the wrong button. Sorry. Here. And Dave Ringler, I believe, is traveling. He's traveling. Okay. All right. So, public comments. Those citizens wishing to speak on agenda and non agenda items will be allowed a maximum of four minutes each to address their concerns. This is the only time during the meeting that citizens are allowed to address the Downtown Development Authority. Please state your name and address for the record if you would like. There's nobody present. I see no members of the public present. Nobody on Zoom? And nobody's mm -hmm. on, on Zoom. Conflicts of interest and ex parte communication inquiry. Anybody have anything to report? This one here. All right. Approval of the agenda. So move. All right. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Agenda. Motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting, May 24, 2021. Oh. Just go through one motion for all the items in the consent agenda. Okay, motion to, you want to go through all the motions one at a time on the consent agenda? And I'm saying you just asked for one motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, one motion to approve, motion to approve consent agenda. I'll move to approve the consent agenda. A second. 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 All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any opposed? No opposed. Okay. So, under the consent agenda, motion to approve meeting. Motion Move to down. Accept and file financial report balance sheet revenue expenses. Mm -hmm. So you've already approved of all these, so you don't. Okay, care. we've approved uh, basically everything under six. So seven. seven and then eight. All right, unfinished business is just says A, so there's no unfinished business. Uh, we don't have any, it was all taken care of under the consent agenda. Okay, any new business? We do. Okay, discussion on cleanup maintenance activities in the DDA district. So um, we, we do have a couple of people who have kind of joined forces with us to help maintain the DDA district. Uh, Gloria and Dennis Graves, who indicated they'd be here, but they're not here. Uh, Ms. Ensley, did you want to take the opportunity to kind of discuss them briefly and introduce kind of what they're up to? Yeah, so this couple reached out to me when I posted on Facebook to see if any business owners wanted to help uh, with maintaining the flowers downtown, which by the way, look amazing. Um, they, they approached me about doing it and they have been doing it for free for the whole summer. So my husband did it for about a month um, and, and then they took it over and they're literally walking up and down our street with a ladder and a five gallon bucket. I was hopeful that the city would be so kind to let them use the watering um thing that we bought um, i don't know if that has been approved yet but i was hopeful i mean these people are not from our town they're out from out of town they are staying in a local campground and they are just trying to help and 
let me just tell you, she's out there every other day and she spends hours. She weeds them, she waters them, and she fertilizes them. They look amazing. And quite honestly, next year, I don't know if I'll do it if she's not here. Because I don't think that we have enough man, people, like enough staff to maintain these big, beautiful baskets. I mean, they look awesome, but I don't think we have enough staff to do it. So is it mainly just watering the baskets that is the issue? Yeah, so somebody has to water them and then fertilize them. And they have it has to be done every other day. I mean, it's been super hot. I mean, obviously it's been raining, so it hasn't needed it for the last week. But before that, when it was so hot, somebody had to go out every other day or they well, literally will die. If we could make that job take less than, say, 30 minutes total from the time they fill the tank with some miracle Grow a small onboard DC pump that's plugged into a battery charger that's in a wagon, like one of these utility wagons. And then this DPW summer help employee that's on the next item down, if they could drag that down and just simply spray each of the plants, we could do something like that. I'd be happy to build the water cart and donate it. We so have the, it. The city, we does, do? the city does have a watering uh, trailer um, the issue from the city side right now is we don't really have, we just hired Corey. We should have had a uh, summer help person on at least a month ago. Um, and frankly, we'd love to have two summer help employees, but as you guys probably are well known, well known from being business people, uh, it's virtually impossible to get employees right now. Because they're being paid to sit at home. Yes. Uh, amongst other things. So, um, you know, it, it's a staffing issue from the city side. Um, and, you know, frankly, uh, the DPW guys are out there taking care of the water, the sewer, the mowing, all the parks and everything else. Yeah. Uh, Gloria and Dennis Graves are doing an amazing job and uh, the, the flowers look great, but that's the only thing they're taking care of. And it's a little bit easier to focus on it when that's the only thing you're doing. Right. right. The thing is, we may not be able to count on them next year to do the job. Right. Yeah, but you guys remember, they're doing it for free. Yeah. Right. And so part like, of the reason. For free. The only people I... I'm sorry, Laura, I didn't know if you had more to say. I think you muted yourself. Like I have given them gift cards because I appreciate what they're doing because I know, I know, I, I see them every other day out there for hours, right? Which is something, I mean, we want our downtown to look beautiful. So it's fabulous that they're doing it. And I'm thankful for that. I'm, I'm hoping that somewhere along the lines maybe the dda can recognize them so uh, they don't have to do this yep so if i could just for a sec laura um so uh, there was discussion about hiring them as the summer employees but for various reasons it's not going to work out so what I what I discussed with them was that the DDA could, at the very least, help pay for any of the, uh, you know, the little flags that they put in there for Flag Day or um, uh, the fertilizer and stuff that they're going through. But they do have to provide, you know, receipts for this kind of stuff, and we'll pay them back. Um, it's also maybe a good conversation uh, to have with the finance director how much money the DDA could offer to pay them for their service. Uh, before it generates, you know, a W-2. So if that's something the DD is interested in doing, we could- You're can... allowed to pay an individual up to $600 before you have- I thought that's what the amount was, but I wasn't 100% sure. So the board could, in recognition of their service this year, offer to pay them 599 bucks at the end of the year, if the board wants to. But that's a, that's, you know, something you guys have to decide. Mr. Manager. Would it be possible to have the, the, the persons doing the watering uh, get with Corey to drive the unit to pull that water wagon? Or could we simply, by having them as an employee, use one of the lawnmowers or the one they use to tow it with? Well, but so that's part of the problem is they're not my employee, therefore they're not covered by the city's insurance. So, um, Corey, the DPW person, he's supposed to be uh, being able to water, but as you can imagine with the DPW's other issues that they have, uh, he doesn't always get to it. So 
I'm very thankful for the work that Glory and Dennis are doing. Uh, as Laura indicated, the flowers look amazing. Um, but it's it's a staffing issue, timing issue, and there's lots of other stuff that the DPW workers are working on. How big is this trailer? Is it a sidewalk trailer, or does it actually go down the road? Oh, it's a down-the-road trailer. It's a, two, a little two-wheel trailer. It's not very big. It's got a tote on it, like those white totes with a gasoline motor on it. Oh, uh, fairly light. It's just the weight of the, the water in the trailer, basically. And Laura, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the Graves indicated that you guys, the Ensleys, had a backpack watering unit of some kind. Yeah. Yep. So I give them a backpack watering unit, but they're, they're, they're not strong enough to carry it. Okay, they are, but it really, it, it hurts her back very bad. A five gallon so bucket. she can't, yeah. she can't use, pounds. she can't okay. use that anyhow. Are they getting from Wait, you guys right now, walking or driving? I think they're walking down the street with a, a little ladder and a couple gallon jugs. Now, the benefit of the trailer is that in addition to doing the hanging baskets, they can also do the uh, concrete, you know, uh, earth boxes. So do they have a vehicle with a hitch? Because they could borrow, could they borrow the no, trailer? So that's the issue is uh, I don't think our insurance would cover city equipment being borrowed by non-employees. Yeah, could can, the city can we make an employee for a dollar? Uh, I don't think so. Or we make them employees. So like if they do it every other day for say half hour a day, if we can streamline it, you're looking at you know, maybe one hour, two hours a week, two hours, just say two hours a week. So what do we have like 10 weeks that we have to water the flowers for? So we have like 20 hours at say, $15 an hour, even $20 an hour is 400 bucks. So even if, here, here's a thought. We have Corey, our new employee for, the, for them. Dedicate every two days at blank time, he will be there with a trailer with the city equipment. He drives the truck, they do, they perform the they job. They drive down and perform the do it. Just, so now we're putting three people into watering when I could just have Corey do it. Well, that's true, but they're free. Yeah. And we they're get it done out. quick with that many people. And that would uh, streamline it by he could stay in the vehicle and just keep moving up. Yeah. Well, the other issue is that Corey is, in fact, doing other things, too. Well, he is hired to take care of the DDA, correct? Yeah. The downtown? At least half of his hours, yes. Is he full-time? Well, he's, he's not. One hour a week. Two hours, so you figure two hours a week, or maybe let's say four max, that he would dedicate to the downtown watering. Mm -hmm. Would he want some extra hours on the DDA tab? So we're letting the this get away from us. Yeah. Um, so again, I'd be happy to look at. I can run to Family Farm and Home. We get a one of these gardening trailers. We can put four or five gallon pails in it, which is a lot of weight. It's 160 pounds worth of water, but you can pull 160 pounds easier than you can carry 40. So then we put an Atwater bilge pump hooked up to a 12 volt car battery that gets charged, parked in the storage thing. And we put it on a little PVC boom with a little on off valve. They don't even have to get on a ladder now. They just pull it down, reach up, turn the valve on, turn it off, go to the next one. Well, this, this might be something that you wanna take up with the graves themselves, cause I don't know what their personal capabilities are. Uh, the only thing I brought it to you guys today was to discuss paying them back for any of the supplies that they've purchased out of pocket. Most definitely. And then also the possibility, uh, anytime you guys want, to donate up to, what did we say, $599 to them uh, for the service that they're providing. And I, yeah, I think a donation is different than actually paying an individual fee. Any way we'd have to structure it so that we wouldn't have to issue a W-2 or anything like that. Hey, Mike, can you tell me what Corey is doing for the DDA? Um, I could, if you give me a minute. Okay. Uh, I, I did have the DPW send me a list of the things that he's been working on. So right now, uh, he's spending two hours cleaning the sidewalk downtown once a week. He's mowing and trimming DDA district grass uh, once a week. That's up to eight hours. 
Uh, he's watering plants downtown once a week at two hours. And he's doing uh, DDA lots, city, and cleaning curbs, whatever that means, at two hours. So those are the hours that he's uh, working in the DDA district per week. A week, okay. I, I wonder if we can get added to that list, maybe the weeds. I took a walk downtown the other day and I, I was kind of embarrassed of all the weeds sticking up out of our sidewalks. Yep, that's already and, that's already something he's taking care of. Matter of fact, uh, okay. I saw him out there spraying the weeds last week. Um, good. Last okay, week good. it wasn't raining torrentially, so probably two weeks ago. Right. So can we take some money out of the DDA budget to maybe add if he was interested in more hours? We're already paying him out of DDA. Budget. Yep, so you guys do have a budget that you're paying for half of his time. Half his time. Can we add to that at all to get more? Uh, I'll have to talk to Bill and see how many hours he's currently working. Because he may not want more hours. And it'll, you know, you go for a week, you don't need to water the flowers. And then the next week they're boiling out there. I mean, anytime you guys have somebody who might want to apply for the second summer help position, that would be of infinite more use to me uh, than trying to do all this shuffling that we're talking about now. If anyone's got a kid who's, you know, in need of some discipline and hard work. They, don't they have to be 18? They do, yes. I don't know if they're 18. Running the equipment, they have to be 18. That was 16 for old hour. Or uh, no, the city's vehicle. equipment has to be 18. More equipment for yeah, for me it was 16 back for, for the pineapple. I mean, I guess I could look into if the DDA wants to hire somebody who's less than 18 through the DDA, not through the city. Uh, they just wouldn't be allowed to use any of the city equipment. So if we're just looking for somebody to walk up and down the sidewalk and pull weeds and water plants. Uh, that doesn't really require equipment usage. Well, watering the plants involves transporting water with equipment. Well, not if they're going to do it like the graves are with a gallon jug and a trailer. Uh, I mean, a, like a wagon. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe the Ensley 40 pound backpack. I think we're, we've belabored this quite a bit. Anyways, I, I'm just looking for ideas at this point. Um, I need, you know, assistance. Maybe. Uh, Jody would like to on Mondays help us out. <laughs> That's a no. Okay. Good meetings. I think we had one kid apply that I think would be fabulous for this job, but I think he's 17. Am I right, Mike? Uh, I believe he was under 18. I don't remember how old he was. Yeah. Okay. Well, he's he might, a hard worker. You might be able to take some load off of all this quarry. Yeah. So let me look into what the law requires regarding somebody under the age of 18 and the insurance uh, issues we might have with running city equipment. And then if that young man's still uh, interested, or young person, I guess, um, maybe that's a possibility. Would it be considered a conflict of interest if one of the business owners downtown took this job? Uh, I don't see why not. Not getting paid. There'd be, well, yeah, so if we're talking about not getting paid, um, then sure, you're welcome to volunteer your time anytime you want. The okay, only the, issue that I could foresee is if a board member um, of the DDA or planning commission, then that becomes an issue of becoming an employee of the city on a board that you oversee. Right, and, and if the wagon was there, I could do it every day after the bakery is closed. That doesn't bother me. I just don't want to haul the, pe the pack up and down the street by myself all day. Be more than happy to haul a wagon up and down the street every day. That wouldn't bother me one bit. So if that, that existed, that's an option as well. Okay, let me have my fabricator look at scabbing something together. <laughs> to me, that just seems like a simple solution. I'm more than happy to do that, especially, you know, I, I can literally park the wagon in the empty space behind my building and I'll go out when my afternoon girl shows up, water everything, park it again, and I'm done. He's going to be ready to move on. Yep. All right. So uh, the next one was DPW summer help employee Corey. I think we already discussed, discussed that. that. So it's yeah. kind of covered. Uh, discussion of summer priorities. 
So um, you know, we haven't had a meeting, I think, in two or three months. Um, I think largely because once you guys get your budget set, uh, things kind of just move forward from there. We don't necessarily have to come back and ask for permission to do a lot of this stuff. Now, part of the uh, consent agenda was paying for the flowers that the Ensley team went out and, and purchased, and of course, the bicycle race as well. Um, so I put this here uh, for any discussion about what your board priorities are for the rest of this summer. Um, I know I spoke with Ms. Ensley earlier today, and it's something that's been bugging me also. Uh, which is the installation of the trash bins that the chamber had donated um, out on the main street. And the issue there has been that the storm drain project has taken up a lot of staff time. Um, so that project, I believe, is hitting main street in the next couple of days. And then they're going to take a week or two vacation around the 4th of July holiday. So DPW should, at the very least, get started on that installation uh, sometime after the 4th of July holiday. But Beyond that, does the board have any specific priorities uh, that they want to accomplish through the DDA over the summer? Could you solve the emptying of those trash, new trash bins? I have not. Um, so I was contacted the other day by uh, our current uh, trash hauling provider, uh, Air Waste, uh, except their, their contact was uh, hey, I heard that the city was thinking about moving to a single license uh, trash hauling service, which is not true. Um, but I took it as an opportunity to write back and say, hey, sure would like to hear back on your intentions of, you know, actually doing the trash pickup like we have been getting for years and years. So I sent that email out, I think, Thursday or Friday last week, and I haven't heard back yet. But what I told the DPW was, at this point, I don't care. Uh, the stupid trash wheelie bins that have been out there for over a year get blown around in the wind and all that other stuff. Uh, if they're going to leave those out there, we're going to have our nice trash bins next to it so that the chamber and the city, uh, the citizens, know that the city at least is doing our job. And we can work on air waste as we move forward. So it's, we can't afford to have DPW empty those? We can. Sure, we could we could redirect and, and have somebody, you know, spend an hour getting the trash bins out. Mm -hmm. But then, why are we keeping air waste around if they're not going to do what they promised to do? In the past, we had uh, after air the past air waste took the bags out and dumped them, and we had a person walk Main Street and put bags back in. Yep. You don't yep. want to do it by hand. Well, and so that's been their argument during COVID was that it was unsafe for them to come out and pick up the trash. Mm -hmm. So instead they put these ugly wheelie bins out and now they pick them up with their automated truck, yeah. which I'm sure saves them money, which gives them little incentive to go back to the old way. So maybe that's what we do and maybe we go with a different trash haul provider then. Maybe for that specific job, we could, I know that uh, A to Z would pick it up. They don't use the mechanical type um, trash. Or the main street pickup, they may do that. Yeah. Well, and so that would probably require a restructuring of the contract that we have. That's another. Which I'm okay with, but, you know, this is not a question for the DDA, unfortunately. This is a question for the council. Yep, all right. So any summer priorities other than trash bins? This year, as far as I'm concerned, I think we're. Yeah, it's, summer's half over. It's kind of nice that everyone's out. Don't, don't say that. Take a breath. Oh, it is. Let it repose. Summer is the fall. third Thursday of August, and it's coming up fast. Yes. Well, so that kind of leads us into the next one, then. All right, hay bale decorations, flower pot decorations, light up Main Street. Yep, so, you know, the, the DDA is only obviously recently uh, come into money. Um, and I don't think we have formulated a good autumn, winter kind of, this is what we do each year. I have tried to scattershot a few things, try some different things out, see what works for us, see what's easy, see what costs money. Um, but I need to kind of hear from the board what they think we should be prioritizing with autumn and winter. Now, uh, with the new uh, money that we spent on Christmas decorations for the Harvest Year Springs, uh, that might you know, kind of eliminate the light up Main Street 
in addition to the fact that I think one business took that money last year, maybe two businesses. Um, flower pot decorations for Halloween. Um, I think it went over well, but it wasn't enthusiastic. Um, and the hay bale decorations, uh, people wanted those free hay bales, but they cost a lot of money. I think the city actually picked up the additional cost because the DPW costs were not factored in. Um, and I guess if you're going to do the flower pot decorations or the hay bales, I'd prefer to do the flower pots because it's significantly easier and costs less money. But is there anything that the board thinks that the DDA should be working on for the autumn and winter or, you know, kind of drawing people downtown or decorating downtown? Maybe what we do is if people want to do the hay bales, we make, uh, we tell them where they're available and we can go get them or have them delivered and we pay for them. I kind of like to do them because it gives that fall, autumn festive feel. And um, have we looked into doing kind of like a harvest fest like uh, Rockford does where they have scarecrow making and face painting and just kind of some outdoor activity, even if it's just for a weekend? Um, you could. But that's going to eat up a significant portion of your entire budget. Right. Now because, generate too because I currently donate my time on Wednesdays to make sure that the summer concert series goes forward. So every Wednesday throughout the entire summer, I'm spending two to three hours trying to get that done. Um, this is in addition to my planning commission night meetings, my city council night meetings, my fire station night meetings. <laughs> um, we don't have staffing for that. So we'd have to entirely staff it out or get volunteers. So, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for the possibility, but it would be very costly. Now, um, I have been working with the chamber, the library and city impact um, to put together children's activities for the summer concert series. Um, and so, you know, just like everything else in theater, when we try to get something done, it takes, takes the entire community. So if we want to, what we could probably do is uh, organize a harvest festival, at least the concept of one, and then assign you know, this part to that person, this part to that person, right? So the Ensley team has now put together their duck race, what, two, three years in a row, Laura? Yeah, I think, yeah, something like that. I, I will say to you guys that I had a company reach out to me that does um, their family does Rockford's uh, start a summer celebration it's a huge carnival company and they're trying to get something in the books uh, late fall in Cedar Springs that and I have kind of their contact if I was actually going to give it to Red Flannel because they Flannel. they uh, will move us to the top of the waiting list, which means there wouldn't be one. So that's the next problem is um, I would assume that the city would prefer to maintain the Red Flannel Festival when it is. So we'd, have to, come, so we'd have to come up with a fall harvest festival, which doesn't impinge on that festival. A week before. Well, the Red Flannel Festival would say that the week before still belongs to them. So. Well, it's just the pageant and a um, yeah, few activities, nothing. That gets billed on it. Well, so I guess, Laura, I'd be interested to see what the festival coming to town a week or two before Red Flannel Festival would cost. Uh, if you've got uh, the information. So you don't, you don't pay for them. They pay you. Yeah, it's a, it's a, the city makes profit. Well, but we'd still have to do other things for it. We'd have police costs and fire costs. And if we want to decorate with the hay bales ahead of time and stuff like that. But so no, I what? just, it's the, it's the Skirbex, which probably rings the bell to Rose Powell, I'm sure. So the two brothers apparently split, split I don't know the whole story. Anyhow, Jamie Skirbeck is very interested in doing this in Cedar Springs. So I just shared the contact card with you, Mike, so you had it. Okay, I guess that's something we'll uh, start working on. Well, the revenues from that circus, whatever, could pay the cost. Maybe have some surplus left over. Roll them back into that. Okay, so. Uh, something to, to look at. Any thoughts on the hay bales, flower pots, or light up Main Street? 
Has the city been doing the hay bales for a while? I've only been around for a couple of years. So I, want to, I don't know how long the city has been doing that. No. So we started out with the flower pot decorations. Um, but we're running out of flower pots. Yeah. So we're using the old flower pots from the 80s. Um, and I think we have 15 or 16 of them. Um, they don't look so great anymore. Oh, but that's why we're using them for Halloween decorations. But, <laughs> um, so we've been doing that fairly consistently. Um, the issue has been trying to get people to vote on the best one and stuff like that. It just requires a lot of effort and not that many people vote. So the hay bales thing came up last year. And I think the DDA bought all the hay bales, but then the actual cost of the city for the DPW to go out and actually put them in places. And now, you know, when you offer three people like, well, I want seven free, you know, hay bales and just giant pain in the butt. Um, and frankly, I don't think there was a whole lot of effort put into the hay bale decorations by a lot of people. So, um, so yeah, we've only done that once. Then the light up Main Street, I think the DDA offered something like $50 for anyone who wanted to buy new Christmas lights to light up the front of their storefront. And we only had one or two businesses take advantage of that. But we did it too late. Everybody already had True. their lights. We, we did do it, I think, in November, which is a bit late. So maybe rather than just... I had my windows all lit up, and this is the first time I've ever even heard there was a light up Main Street contest last year. And I'm on this board. So yeah, it, think about that. It's not, it wasn't a contest. It was just if you put in 50 bucks worth of new lights, you got 50 bucks back from the DDA. So um, maybe you do that with the hay bale. For people who want to do it, it's available and they do it. But that way you're not giving away seven bales that are just sitting there doing nothing. People are actually, they only get reimbursed if they do something and they get reimbursed after the fact. Okay. So maybe do the hay bale similar. Yeah, then, I'm sorry, Laura. I, then you got people that say, well, I did something and, you know, their version of something is putting the hay bales out there and stuff in a, you know, I don't know, something on top that's not you know, really much more than just the hay bales, you know? So then it's up to whose discretion of what they did and if they did enough. And I will tell you that if the city doesn't go and get the hay bales and distribute them, you're going to have significantly less people interested in participating. We tried to put pumpkins out with ours last year, but the pumpkins all disappeared. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah. That's always so I'm, I'm generally just opposed to the hay bill ideas. I like the light up Main Street personally. So maybe we hit harder on the light up Main Street, make a bigger yeah, amount, start yeah, contacting businesses earlier, late or early. Thanksgiving or just before. Get it out early. Get it out early. And advertise it heavily. Yeah. I would even start it right after Halloween just so that they plan to get their lights up on time because that was really an issue like for us. Spring just... Light did a great job last year. That was really cool. It, it is shocking how many times we have to try to contact people and we just still get ignored. Um, so I do try to lean on the board members and the chamber members uh, to get the word out too. But maybe um, for your next meeting, I should have something put together for that so we can start advertising as soon as possible. For Christmas light stuff, you really got to start pushing it around Labor Day to really get everybody to really know what it is. If you if you wait until Halloween or especially Thanksgiving, it's not going to work. You really got to start pushing it around September. I, yeah, I was going to say, I think we need to probably start doing it at least by Red Flannel Day. And then so people know that when they purchase lights and have them up between X date and X date, you know, the DDA will pay for those lights. Okay. Yeah, that was an issue last year. Okay, so hay bale decorations, no. Flower pot decorations, possibly. Light up Main Street earlier. Get more money. More money. Advertise it sooner. Okay. And then uh, discussion on Cedar Springs Blitz bike race. I just wanted to see what impressions everybody had. I know that uh, Mr. Ringler was trying to get restaurants to participate in the taste of Cedar Springs. Uh, he indicated- You were there for the, I'm sorry to talk over your mic, but Bakery was there for that. I consider that an unqualified success. I would love if we can keep doing the blitz if for nothing else. And it just brought attention to this town. This is the first year the bike race was ever done and they had almost 200 riders. That is insane. It'll double every year. Yeah, and something, that's, that, something that that's people don't realize is that people with bicycles and bi who go to bike races have money. You know, my bikes cost almost 2000 bucks a piece. 
I know guys that there were two out. other bike races locally that day. So there was one of three in the whole city, and we still pulled 200 to our little town here in North Kent County. Yep. That is huge. So I guess the question is, uh, was the bike race a success? Everybody I talked to said it was. And then business-wise, was it a success? And what, if anything, uh, needs to be done to improve the business side of the bike race? Well, it's coming from a restaurant owner that's downtown, I will tell you that the uh, the taste thing wasn't really pushed that well because as soon as the race was over and the awards were over, poof, nobody left. Everybody's gone. I was there from the right about the time the race ended until the uh, taste ended, and I did all of my sales before noon. From about noon until three, I did squat. So I think the bike race was pushed well, got a lot of information out. People knew it was there. Nobody knew about what was happening in the afternoon. So if that could get pushed more, we could make the taste of Cedar Springs as big of a pro a, uh, event was, as the Blitz. Was make it, a huge I didn't make it? Was was the taste part in the same area where the awards are being handed out for the bike race? Yes, it was in the uh, breweries parking lot behind the building there. Because a lot of these, well, as the race gets bigger, you can really stretch that out for a longer period of time. So you release all the classes at different times. So you have like a two or three hour window where people have to stick around to get their awards. I'll be honest, if I'd known how many people were there for the race, I had to set up when the race kicked off. Yeah. Because there were people waiting all day. And I, I actually missed out on a couple hours because I was waiting for the taste to kick off. If Dave had reached out to me and said, hey, uh, there's people here now. And I was like, I'll be there. And I was right on top of it. Yeah, hot coffee and cinnamon rolls would go pretty... Especially before a race, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So maybe uh, let's work on getting food more available to people before the meeting or before the race. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, I ran a 5K over in Detroit yesterday and I stuck around for a few minutes afterwards for the ceremony. It was 90 degrees. I had sweat through all my clothes. People don't want to stick around after they're gross and nasty, right? So I wonder if there's some way we could have. Uh, I don't know, cleaning station or something that people could take a shower somewhere. Um, well, something as simple as a, as a changing station. I used to run Tough Mudders back in the day uh, when I was in Colorado. Those you obviously have to uh, shower after because you're covered in mud. But something as simple as a screened in porch that people can't see through that has private changing stations. People can change out of all their wet, dirty stuff, change into clean stuff, and then go and enjoy themselves. Some people are going to want a bath. Some people won't. But something as simple as baby wipes and a change of clothes makes you feel a heck of a lot better. Yeah, so maybe the DDA needs to look into not only changing stations, but some kind of cleaning solution, um, you know, and, and sponsor that as part of the race to help encourage business activity afterwards. Maybe a bag drop. Bag drop um, would be a huge benefit. But the town's small enough, you could leave your stuff in the car and then just go change from there anyways. Yeah, at the fire station or whatever, just set up an area in the fire station with curtained off areas. Same with the holes. I, clarify, by bag drop, you mean sort of like a coat check for someone's change bag? <laughs> yeah, so they, they're given a bag, you can put all your stuff in it, and then the bag is secured until after the race. Yeah, yeah but like you said here, you just park your car, it's in the car. Yeah. You have to carry your bike on a rack anyway. That's what I do. So, okay. Okay. Anything else about the bike race? Okay. Next one is discussion on summer concert, concert series, uh, social district. And children's activities. So children's activities and business. So again, we've been trying to promote this. Um, I don't know how you can live in the city on Wednesday night and not hear it. Um, I've had people telling me they've heard it all the way by the high school. Yep. Um, so I guess my question is, is the city or the businesses, uh, do we need to do anything more or different to help promote the concert series itself? The city is putting it on the back of the tax bill, which goes out this week. So people will get it in their tax bill. But it's been advertised pretty heavily through the chamber and the CDBDT and everything. And it's like, if you, there's so many communities around us that have Wednesday night concerts. Yeah, Rockford's got Tuesday and Rockford. Wednesday. Well, so I think when we originally talked about doing it, we said Wednesday because Rockford was doing Tuesday. 
Yeah. They do both days. Well, yeah. They have like a, a country bluegrass and then like a, I think there's two nights. I, I haven't been to it because I've been out of town so far. Yeah, we're just competing with other communities. You know, we're going to pull our local crowd in. And depending on what band is there, that's who's going to come. You know, that's, um, that's just the way it is. Maybe having some type of poster that businesses could put in their window. We, do. we have a flyer that um, is available. Okay. And I think we've, I emailed it to everybody in the chamber and the DDA. Right. I think. I'll, I'll happily print you some today though. Yeah, because I would post that in my restaurant. So everybody that comes in and out is like, oh, they have music on Wednesday. And Facebook so pages. That. So it would be good yeah. for all the businesses on the Facebook pages. Yeah. Okay, so I'll make sure to send that back out today. But anybody wants copies of that, I'll print it right after this meeting and send it home with you. Good thing. It's a good thing. And, it, and it'll grow. We just got some growing pains. It's like oh. the bike race. Like so many things. First year event, it's hard to get people to come down. Yeah. They'll come. But Some, could, somebody suggested to me that we advertise on M Live. They have a free community promotion. I, I haven't looked it up yet, but they said everybody's advertising on it, but but Cedar Springs. So maybe that would help. I've not heard of that. Um, so I mean, I'll look into it, but I've not heard of that. And frankly, uh, I'm not going to get into it. I'll look into it. So uh, the second part is the social district. Um, Jody, not to put you on the spot, but have you heard back at all? No, I plan on calling them today again to um, what's going let, on. Let me email the person I've been dealing with down there who gave me the approval for um, uh, brewery. But you know, right now we also want to advertise that a social district is a permitted thing down there for the yeah. concerts. Um, during the first two concerts, I I asked Dave Ringler to make sure that he was walking around with a beer in hand so that people knew that you could bring a beer to the concert, right? So I don't know if it's going to require uh, both restaurants to say, you know, your employee take your beer and walk it over there so people see that my cup's got you know the and they have a craft cocktail stand at the place that's what you know that's off site uh, as much as i'd love for that to happen you have like a little zone that's like not special. Yeah, that's, that's state law that's, that's nothing i can do liquor commission yeah so i'd love it but doesn't seem permitted under the uh, michigan liquor control commission act so uh, social district, anything we can do to help promote that, encourage people, remind them they can buy a beer or a drink and take it over there. I've been having a ball down there every I I would like to see more board members down there. You know, I've seen two so far. So they are too dumb hot. Yeah. yeah. Second one is rainy. Yeah. yeah. And there's shade. Kurt said he's gonna put in some more shade trees. Yeah. Yep. So we're going to put in some more trees down there uh, for people to get showing pains. Yeah. It's nice. I can sit on my back step and I can hear the music, so I don't need to go down. It's 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 fun. You see a lot of people you know. Oh yeah, it's nice. It's nice. And then the second thing is the children's activities and business promotion. So I'm currently working with the chamber. Um, if you guys attended the first one, you saw the chamber had a big event pr immediately prior to the summer concert. Uh, there were hundreds of people out there for that. And then the second the concert started, everybody left. Got so dumb hot. Um, well, I think it's because parents want to be there with their kids. And if their kids are being forced to listen to music, they get bored out of their minds. So I'm working with the library and the chamber to come up with some more children's activities that kids can do immediately prior to or during the event. So... Um, I think I've got a genius sign up or something with the chamber where if you as a business or a group want to put together or sponsor some kind of kids activity, you sign up there and say, this is what I'm going to do. But the second part of this is the business promotion. So we want to use this as an opportunity for businesses to come forward and say, hi, I'm so-and-so business and here's my booth. Come talk to me. Come, you know, I exist, right? But we want to limit it to, you know, the businesses are actually in town, actually in the DDA district, um, because I see no value in promoting some group that is 30 miles away, right? 
So you can also sign up to do that uh, during these events. The only catch is we don't want you selling anything. Um, this is not a flea market. We want you to promote your business, but we don't want you selling stuff. So if that's something that interests any of the businesses, uh, I guess show up with your tent and your table and come out and say hi. Any samples could they do? Uh, let's see if Tom wanted to bring down some free, free so samples for tasting. Food is the only uh, option that is allowed to sell anything. I'm talking about trinkets and stuff. Um, and to do food, you have to either be exempt from Kent County Health Department rules or follow Kent County Health Department rules. Mm -hmm. So the restaurants have a hard time doing that. Uh, the bakery, by just the nature of how they have their food set out, uh, I believe is already exempt. That is correct. So the, we've allowed them to come out and sell. And the restaurants are welcome to if they can do it in such a way that it meets the rules. But, you know, I don't want trinkets and, you know, stuff. Yeah. To, to do food as a restaurant, you have to have someone come out and like oh, I know. your station and everything and make sure that you're up to code before you can even sell anything. Plus the permit. Yeah. Plus well, and permit. so that's why we have a social district, right? Yeah. So, yeah, we're trying to help everybody we can. Okay. But unfortunately, I don't write state law. That's good. My other aspect of that is you know, being a restaurant, we're short staffed and finding enough staff to be able to pull off something like that is, is a little bit difficult at this time. Yeah. So you don't have your uh, social district license yet? Is that what you're waiting for my permit? Yeah. So is it possible to have like a runner bring beer down? <laughs> um, well, I don't know if that's even allowed, but we would have, we'd have to be able to verify IDs and stuff like that. Yeah. Like our, our way of doing it right now is we check ID, we have a sticker, they actually sign the sticker so that whoever's name is on that sticker is the one holding that drink and drinking it. And that's our way of keeping us safe at our restaurant. Yeah. It's dated and they sign it. When they go out the door with it. Mm -hmm. okay. You can bet the state will have somebody there to set you up. Yeah, better follow the rules. So, Anyone have any comments, thoughts, concerns about children's activities and business promotion? I spoke to Red Flannel to see if they wanted to do something. So they're cooking up something. I don't know what. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything big and serious. Um, if somebody wants to, who, who's better with kids than I am, wants to lead freeze tag or something during the event, uh, I'm sure kids would love it. Could you bring down a cornhole? Yep, so I was going to talk with Dave Ringler something. about whether, so he's got boards for his tournament that he runs. Yes. Um, I don't see why you couldn't set a few of those out, like kids or adults play with them. Right. But he has to give us permission to do so. Right. Well, Red Flannel's got boards too, so. So maybe the Red Flannel will want to set theirs up. Well, we'll see what they're going to cook up. They got to have a meeting first. <laughs> okay, anybody else? All right, so we move on to correspondence, Main Street micro grants, and Zoom, DDA Zoom public notice yep. for June 28th. So the Main Street micro grants are you know, something I just put in your uh, agenda for you guys to pursue independently if you're interested. Um, and then the Zoom public notice. So keep in mind that this is technically the last meeting that you can attend virtually for no reason. Uh, every meeting from now through uh, the end of the year should be in person unless you have a health reason um, or military service. So it does not define what a health reason is. So if you have a headache or something, if you've got a cough, whatever, you could attend virtually. But other than that, please come in person. And Rebecca, correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to continue to do the Zoom meetings for any member of the public that wants to attend virtually, right? Correct. Forever? Well, I think uh, in discussions with the, the council members, um, it's such a small charge on a monthly basis, like 30 bucks a month. And, and it's not so much about the DDA or the council, but the planning commission gets a lot of people who attend virtually. Yeah. And under the law, only board members have to attend in person. So members of the public could appear from Detroit by Zoom if they want. All the applications and everything we're getting and everything, we decided for the rest of this year, 
to run the Zoom for anyone to come in and. So, anyways. So then, uh, city manager, DDA director's report. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I feel bad for can canceling your previous meetings. Um, there wasn't a ton to do, and the few things that we did have to do, you approved of as part of your consent agenda. So I appreciate that. Uh, also, Laura, thank you. If you're still there, I, I know you put a lot of work into getting the flowers taken care of, and, uh, the duck race that you continue to do. That's great. Um, and uh, oh, you know, come on here. And uh, you know, this town is uh, it's growing. Uh, we have to both put together the events and draw people to the events, um, which it, it's shocking how that's always a hard thing to do. You, you would think people want to come to events, but seemingly they don't. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for the summer concert series. I've been to the first two rows. I think you were at both of them, right? So music's been good. Uh, I was able to enjoy a beer at the second one. I enjoyed that. Uh, so I invite you out to come, I guess, Wednesday night, 7 to 9 p.m. So that's it. Thanks. Hey, trustee comments. Uh, I just was going to ask Mike to, uh, can you arrange an, another tour of the wastewater treatment plant for anybody DDA interested, pl planning commission? We haven't done that. Well, we did it like years ago or something but or maybe shot. some new folks would like to see it yeah you know, it's funny just this weekend i was thinking about that and i think it was dan clark uh, who was the last one who requested it yeah um yeah i mean i don't see it as a problem um do we want to have it so opening up to the public at large is a problem uh, I prefer, board members i was gonna say i prefer to keep it to board members yeah. And I think it's interesting, but I'm not sure how many of the board members do. So I think it's amazing. But I'll, I'll be happy to talk to uh, Gary and see what we could arrange. He would, he would love it. Oh, I know. He loves talking to people. Um, maybe we could have hot dogs or something out on the grill and invite him. Just tell him if he doesn't have time that I can probably give it to her. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I think if we arrange for it, he'll make time. He likes talking to people. He's proud of that place. Uh, quite a quite a big old machine. Mm. Big investment. Only money. Jody? Um, just looking forward to growing. You know, obviously, we've got some growing pains to go through, but um, I think if we work together, just talking about these um, promotions we have in town, talking to the other businesses in towns that uh, we can work through these growing pains and really see some good things come out of it. Again, not to put you on the spot, but sure. um, is there anything that we can do to assist you with the uh, the drain project? And because you know Main Street's going to get closed here shortly for yeah. about a week or two. Um, not even sure how it's going to affect us, but like the back parking lot that type of thing once there, it'll just make it a little harder for people to get into the building. So, um, so I guess talk to us then about any kind of signage you might want to put out. Yeah. Um, be a little bit more lenient about public uh, sidewalk access for your signage. Okay. Could we, could we put, you see them now and then on, on like on the road close sign on each and then like, okay, the, the red bird is open parking in the rear on, on both ends, parking yeah. in the rear or something on the road close sign that's saying, yeah, the, these businesses are still open. You can come in there, the bakery, for instance. Yep. Any of the other businesses, Jose? Yeah. That's probably my only concern is making sure people know we're, we're not open. during that time and that you can still access our, our restaurant. Yes. Parking will probably be the little bit of the issue, especially once they start digging through our back parking lot. Yeah. So, yeah. Hopefully that'll go quick. Just yeah. let us know what kind of signs you want to put up and we'll make sure to give it up some more for you. Yeah. All right, I'll get my summer interns working on a uh, watering cart that's more affordable. If you have summer that. interns and I can't hire anybody. <laughs> you can't hire somebody. 
You're probably paying your interns more than we can pay, though. <laughs> they make a living wage. Yeah. You want to skip yourself and go to Gary? You know, I've said enough. Um, you know, just to be mindful, you know, we're coming out of this big shutdown. It's going to take a little bit of time to, to get things open back up and people re-engaged you know, and, and to get the staffing up to par where everybody can finally open up. Hopefully it'll happen soon, but <clears throat> if we all keep looking like Kurt maybe says the North Star, we keep focus on that, the direction we want to go, where we want this community to go, and by all working together, we'll get there. Thank you all for your help. All right, so adjournment, what's the procedure? Oh, you got to go through Tom and Laura first. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I forgot about you guys. You're on the Zoom thing. It's hard <laughs> to remember that. Yes, I'm so hard to see over here on the giant it's screen. Too, it's 2D. <laughs> Flat stand I, I have actually uh, no comments today. Thank you. Laura, do you have any public comment or trustee comment? Just that I, I'm excited. There's there's a lot going on in our town. We're growing a lot. And it's just, it's amazing watching the org organizations in town start to work together. And it just, I, I love that. That's it. One thing, we never settled the amount that these volunteers, if they have out-of-pocket expense for reimbursement. Well, it's more of a question of whether the board's even open to the possibility because th they presented me with no receipts of any kind. Um, so this is something that we can continue to address because as Laura indicated, they're currently volunteering their time and money. True. What if we have them approach you and have DPW staff buy the supplies of fertilizer for them. Yeah, we discussed that as an option as well. That'll eliminate that. I think they're doing it because they like beautiful flowers. That's true. But yeah, if, at the end of the day, it would be nice to be able to do something for them, but that's going to require board action. And well, and I'll, I'll work on a better watering system and I'll donate that. Yeah, but if we have them come to the city and have them buy the Wonder Grow, and then that fixes that problem. That's all I have. Okay. Now, what is the process for adjournment? Uh, you've got two options. You can either call for a motion to adjourn, or as chairperson, you can declare it adjourned. Declare it adjourned. Bravo. There we go. No further business to be brought before the board.